So let's take a look now at how we can actually use the Calendar API to show a simple calendar screen. So what I have here in a little demo is that I'm setting up a date, and I want to basically say I want to show the calendar. We'll say for November 6th at 8 a.m. Right, it's election day this year. And so basically, to set the date up, right, I just use the calendar class that's there, right, calendar.getInstance. It right, gives me the initial calendar. And then I'd, on that calendar, I can just set the date, right, the year, the month, the day, hour, and minutes. Right? Now, just one quick thing that if you're not used to working with this calendar class, you want to be sure and use the uh, month constants instead of the month's literals. Uh, they do something kind of strange. The month is actually zero based, right? So January is zero, February is one, that sort of thing. Um, so they're a little inconsistent because days are still one based, right? The first is one, but they made months zero based. So the easiest way to deal with that, calendar class has these constants to just take care of that. So I really encourage you to use those to avoid uh, common mistakes. So I've got that uh, set up for the date, and I've just got a little method here I'm going to call called show calendar at time. Right? And that's where we'll actually go inside of here, this show calendar at time. And that's where we'll do the work to actually display the calendar at that date and time. Right? Now, the first thing I need to do, of course, is convert that date uh, from a calendar into those epoch milliseconds. All right, so I've got a value to store that. All I have to do is just go to my date to show. And there's a get time in millis. Right? That gives me that epoch millisecond. So that's pretty easy. So what I want to do now right, is build the URI for this. Right? Now, as we talked about, we've got this thing called the calendar contract. Right? Inside of there is our content URI. Right? So that's the URI for the calendar itself. Now, remember that we have to add the time and the milliseconds onto that. The easiest way to do that is that in the uh, URI class, there's a build upon method. And what that does is give you back something called a URI builder. So what I'm going to do here is just store that URI builder. Right, now that I have that builder, the rest of it's pretty easy. Right, so I'm going to take the URI builder. I want to append onto that path, and I have to put in the time. Right, so it says I want the path qualified by time. And then there's another class you'll see we use a lot called content URIs. And content URIs has on it a method called append ID. Um, it's kind of a misnomer. What it actually does is that it actually allows you to pass in a URI builder and a long, and then we'll go ahead and convert that long to a string and put it on the end of the URI. We're just going to take that. So we'll take our URI builder. And our long, in this case, is those epoch milliseconds. And so now we've got everything we need for that URI, so we can actually go ahead and create a URI for it. So all we do is take that builder and call build. And we've got now the proper URI with the, uh, the calendar, the time on the end, and the epoch milliseconds. All right, so now we just create the intent. When we create the intent, we want to view the calendar, so we're just going to use the action constant, excuse me, the action view constant. Right, that says we want to view something, and the way we specify we want to view is with the data. So we'll just say intent, oops. set data, and we're going to pass in our URI. Okay, now with that, all we have to do is call start activity and pass it the intent. And that simply, we can now display the calendar at any time we want, which in this case will be 8 a.m. on November 6th. Right, so let's go ahead and run it. Now to view the demo, uh, I'm actually running this off my phone since I have my calendar and everything kind of fully set up on the phone, which is something that's a little bit time consuming to do on an emulator. And I want to go ahead and just go ahead and run it here. Okay, now I'm using a utility called Android Screencast that actually lets me show the screen of my device. Uh, the thing to be aware of is that Android Screencast, although it's kind of cool that it does let you show the screen of your device, it only does like, I think, four frames a second, four or five frames a second, uh, so that things are a little slow as we go through it. Uh, but we'll see it happen. So the other thing you notice is that I can't actually drive it from here on screen. I actually have to drive it from the phone. So what I'm going to do is just going to click this button, which will actually do the work we just did, go through and send that intent. In fact, why don't we do this? Why don't we go in here and just put a breakpoint so we can kind of see all that stuff happen, right? So I'll put a breakpoint inside of there. I'll go ahead and click the menu option. 
you see we broke inside of here, right? So if we just step through, we get our epoch milliseconds, right? we go through, we build our URI, take a look here. And there we have our content, right? Com to Android calendar time, and then that epoch. Right, then we just let it run. Right, so let's go ahead and let it go now. And there you see we have November 6th and 8 a.m. is being displayed. Uh, you notice that the lines aren't he that aren't showing here. That's just an anomaly of this view program. Uh, on my screen, it actually looks correct. We have all the all the lines filled in. But the key is that we were able to easily show the calendar, have it positioned on the date we wanted, and have the time of interest be in view, which is what we wanted to have, excuse me, what we wanted to achieve.